In this lesson we will deal with type 2 compounds and their naming and their formulas. Again, these are compounds that begin with a variable charge cation, cation that is not on your ion sheet. The naming is uh, actually very similar to the first type naming with a couple of key differences, really just one key difference. We're still going to start to name uh, with the name of the cation first, uh, but we're going to follow that with a set of parentheses you know, those things. And we're going to kind of leave it open, and we're going to come back to that. And because uh, the cation is a variable charge, its charge within this compound must be determined and written inside of the parentheses as a Roman numeral. Now, for those of you who don't remember how Roman numerals go, they go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I don't know that we'll ever get above seven. So those are the ones that you would need to know. So how do we do this? Well, let's do a, a couple of examples. Let's do... Um, SNO2 and uh, after that we will do um, how's about we do a polyatomic after that let's do uh, F E uh, C L O 2 3 there we go so how are we going to do these? Well, said a minute ago that we would take the first ion, and uh, this might take you a little while to figure out because these are ions you may not be as familiar with because they're not on your ion sheet. So SN, you find that on the periodic table, and you'll find that that is tin. And then it, since it's tin is not an ion we're familiar with, it's a metal, we're going to leave its parenthesis open. We'll come back to that in a second. And then we look at that next guy. Now, this uh, looks like it might be one of a couple of different things. Looks like it might be either oxide or peroxide. If you remember, oxide is negative 2 and peroxide is O2 negative 2. And uh, I probably shouldn't have chosen this example because there's actually really no good way for you to know which of those it is. I'll just say that uh, unless there's a parenthesis around the O2, let's just presume that it's actually talking about this guy, regular oxide. So, uh, because we don't really want to be looking at the subscripts to figure these things out right now. So the O then is oxide. And so next we have to fill in that Roman numeral. We have to figure out the charge of the tin and put it into Roman numeral and stick it in there. Well, we have to work backwards. Uh, I don't really give details in the notes there how to do this, so you got to kind of learn by example. One, we don't know the charge of tin. It, we know it's plus, but we don't know what it is. Oxide, however, is something we know. It's negative two. Furthermore, we have a subscript here saying that there are two of them. So we actually have two negative twos for a total negative charge of negative four. So the last thing that we know is that whenever two ions come together to make a compound, their charges have to add up to zero. So we've got one tin here who has to have a charge that when it added to th that charge equals zero. So what? Minus four equals zero? Well, of course, four plus four. This must be plus four. So we need to indicate within the parentheses that tin has a charge of plus four. So we write Roman numeral four, and now we're done. That is tin four oxide. So this next example is going to be similar. We are going to start with the first ion there, I, uh, iron and we write its name. We put a parenthesis in. Now we look at the second ion there. ClO2 is, should be familiar from your ion sheet. 
that is chlorite and now we have to again figure out the charge so we look at the negative ion find its total and figure out what the positive ion should have been so in this case chlorite's charge is negative one it's negative one but there are three of them three negative ones is negative three therefore the iron's charge when added to negative three must equal zero so it must be plus three so in this case the iron's charge is plus three roman numeral three iron roman numeral three chloride again the thing in the parenthesis is the charge the thing in the parenthesis is the charge the thing in the parenthesis is the charge it's the charge it's the charge it's the charge a lot of times people don't quite get that it turns out it's the charge uh, i want to do one more don't have uh, room on my blank here for it so let's go ahead and open a new window um, there's there's some examples of things that uh, we should probably go through that i didn't yet let's talk about something like um, molybdenum uh, let's see let's go MO and let's say MO 3 ASO 4 4 okay so this is a little bit more complicated example this is about as complicated as they get for the type 2's so let us uh, start out with this guy. You look out for it on your periodic table, and it turns out to be molybdenum. It's a metal, so uh, it goes first, Roman numeral. This, of course, should be familiar to you. It's arsenate. And now we have to calculate the charge uh, of this guy, plus what? Well, remember, we always know the charge of the negative guy. There are no unknown negative charges. Arsenate's charge is negative 3, but there are four of them for a total of negative 12. So now we know that molybdenum's charge is plus 12. Well, I said earlier that it wouldn't get above, like, 7, and I was right. It doesn't get above 7, uh, generally. If you uh, look here, we want to put here the charge of a molybdenum ion not all of the molybdenum ions together that's 12 we don't want 12 there 12 is all of them added together what we have here is we have three molybdenums times each one's charge must equal 12 and what each one's charge is that's what goes in down here well three times what is 12 well it's four so if each molybdenum is plus 4, and we have 3 of them, that would be 12, and that would cancel out with this other 12. And so each one must be 4, and that's where we get our answer. Molybdenum Roman numeral 4, arsenate, would be the answer to that one. So that is for naming. Well, how do you write formulas? Well, I haven't left a lot of time for writing formulas here because they're incredibly simple. The rules are exactly the same as they were for type 1. Nothing changes. Uh, the only thing to be aware of is that a lot of people don't realize this. you got to remember that the charge is given in the parenthesis. Not the subscript people always do that. Let me show you what I mean. Let's uh, take something, uh, let's take nickel uh, nickel to fluoride nickel to fluoride so we start out with nickel, its symbol is NI its charge is 2 charge is 2. Fluoride is F. Its charge is negative 1. So just like before, we're going to need two of these and one of those. There we go. NIF2. Pretty simple. Here's the mistake people make. Instead of writing this plus 2 here as a charge, a lot of people will write it as a subscript. And they'll go nickel 2 fluoride. That, my friends, is always wrong. Don't do that. 
The only time that has a chance of being right is if it's a one charge, but even then it's just coincidence. Um, <coughs> so that is all. There's nothing really to these. If you know how to do type 1s, you know how to do type 2s for formulas because it's exactly the same rules. The only thing to remember is that the charge is given to you, which actually makes them, should make them easier.